thanks for watching this video tutorial on the Audison AF Forza DSP amplifiers. The AF Forza family of amplifiers are compact, powerful, great sounding, and have advanced bit processing for OEM correction and system tuning all built in. Configuring the bit drive software. Let's open the bit drive software by double clicking on the icon on the desktop. When this window opens, check the software version number here to confirm it's the latest version. Below that, we can see the latest Audison news headlines. In the upper right, we can close the software by clicking on the X, which is useful if we've opened it by mistake. Over here is the refresh icon. This will update the list of amplifiers that are connected to the PC. Here is the list of connected amplifiers. At the moment, there is an M5.11 bit amplifier connected. If we click on the tab labeled offline, we could choose a virtual instance of any AF bit amplifier, and that would let us see and manipulate almost all of that processor's functions. But we want to see all the functions, so let's go back to that M5.11 bit and click on it. The progress bar here at the bottom tells us how the handshake process is going between the M5.11 bit device and the PC. When the handshake is over, the bit drive software opens a window displaying all of the functions available on the connected device. This window isn't maximized initially, but we can maximize it by clicking here in the upper right corner. Save and load a configuration. Let's review the icons across the top of the screen. The one on the far left is the open icon, and we use that to find a configuration file we can load. As you can see, when the cursor hovers over an icon for a few moments, the name of that icon will appear. The next icon opens predefined templates. As of software version 1.0.4, templates have not yet been fully enabled. The next icon is the Save As icon. This saves the configuration file to the PC. The Configuration Report icon lets you review all of the configuration settings in list form and save them if desired. The next icon is one of the most important, Finalize. Warning, always finalize the device before closing the software. Otherwise, the configuration settings may be lost, and this may render some safety functions which use the sound system inoperable. Finalizing writes the current configuration file to non-volatile memory so that it will persist after a power cycle. The Features icon lets us select a few different operating features to configure. Let's look at default volatile data. If the device should lose power, the settings here are what the device will default to when it regains power. Warning! Make sure to properly configure these settings before finalizing the bit device to ensure proper operation after a temporary loss of power. Otherwise, audio output may be lost and some vehicle safety functions may not be audible. These functions may include hands-free calling audio, telematics emergency call audio, and reverse sensor audible warnings. In addition, the vehicle user may not have sufficient volume or sufficient subwoofer level or may have poor sound due to the incorrect memory preset being selected. The settings to be defined are device volume, the default is 0 dB, the source, the default is the master source. Memory, the default is memory one. Subwoofer volume level, the default is zero dB, which is full output. The volume setting for zone one and zone two, the default for both is zero dB. And the final tuning EQ defaults to enabled. Once these settings are saved, they will be applied every time device power is disconnected and reconnected. Audio settings. 
On the upper right side of the screen, the audio settings icon configures the acoustic RTA function. Select the proper audio source. This is either the USB measurement microphone you are using or the external USB sound card you are using. The resolution of the RTA display can be configured in one third octave, one sixth octave, or one twelfth octave modes. The average setting controls how often the display is refreshed. The slower settings average more measurements before updating the graph. Next to that icon, the settings icon lets the user change the language, select imperial or metric for distance, enable the automatic snapshot mode to automatically save all settings, and the entire device can be reset to the initial factory settings. The help icon opens the inline help file. There are also help icons located in each functional section of the software, and this will allow you to easily access the relevant help information for that function. The info icon will open a small window which displays the software version number. Below the info icon, you can see the firmware version number of the connected device. Source selection. Click on master or optical to select the source of the signal that you would like to amplify and process. Click on the edit icon to relabel these sources as desired. The enable or disable button can be used to lock the device onto just a single input source. The zone controls are for use in marine applications in future products, and the zones can also be relabeled after clicking the edit icon. There are six memory presets which can be used to save various configuration settings. Memory settings two through five can each be disabled using this switch. When a memory preset is enabled, you can see that it can be assigned to a specific source or to both sources. And a given memory preset can be copied to as many other memory presets as desired. To the right of the memory preset controls are the controls for the final equalizer, and we will review using the final equalizer in a subsequent episode. Input settings. Each input has a sensitivity drop-down menu. The sensitivity setting tells us how many volts of input signal are needed to make rated power on the output of the amplifier. The left-hand number here is the input sensitivity when we're using the RCA preamp inputs on the preamp input connector. The number on the right here is the input sensitivity when we're using the speaker level inputs on the speaker level input connector. The maximum setting is six volts for the preamp inputs and 22 volts for the speaker level inputs. The minimum setting is 6 tenths of a volt of preamp input and 2.2 volts of speaker level input. It's possible to use some preamp input channels and then use other speaker level input channels at the same time, as long as we don't connect a single channel to both speaker level inputs and preamp inputs at the same time. The mixer here determines where each output channel gets its signal. The column on the left shows all the available input channels and the row across the top shows all the available output channels. We will go into configuring the mixer in subsequent episodes. Each input channel has a two color virtual LED. When it's green, that means we're getting input signal and it's below the set input sensitivity range. If it's red, that means it's exceeding our input sensitivity ceiling. It's useful to test with our balance and fader controls on our source unit to confirm that our input channels are all connected correctly. And we will cover more advanced testing using these LEDs in later episodes. Thanks for watching.